Skies and Clouds in Watercolor by Deb Watson. It's always a good idea to mix up lots of paint before you start painting. I'm using Windsor Lemon Yellow, Quinacridone Rose Red, and Cobalt Blue. It seems like I'm mixing up a lot of paint, but you'll quickly see how fast you run out to make up a huge pool of the blue at least. Before I start painting, I wet the paper. This is called a hake or a hockey brush, and I'm really pouring the water on. And then I'm going to tilt the paper and let the excess water drip off. Today I'm working on a watercolor block. And if you tilt the paper in the light, you'll be able to see if you missed any spots as to whether the paper's shiny or not. I missed a spot on the edge, so I go over it one more time. When it's done dripping, it's usually a nice consistency to paint on. I'm using my hockey brush, and you can see the brush is thirsty and soaks up almost my entire blue puddle. Instead of mixing my paint on the palette, I just dip the edge of my brush in the blue and the yellow and let it mix on the paper. I'm working from the left side over. And the paper is a little bit wet, but I have enough paint and just the right amount of wetness that it's staying fairly well where I put it. That just takes practice. I'm not worrying about making it darker at the top at this point. I'm just laying in a nice basic color. I'm going to go ahead and put the shadow color in the clouds on while it's still wet. And the shadow color in these clouds is very blue, but it's a little warmer and darker on the left-hand side, so I add red. And for variety, I'll add a little more yellow toward the right-hand side. If your shadow color runs into the sky or blends with the foreground, don't worry about it. This is going to dry much lighter because we're working wet on wet. And since I have blue in my brush, I just pick up some yellow, blue and yellow, make a green, and put a vague green at the bottom. Now I'm going to tilt this and let it run just a little bit. Where it puddles up on the edges, I'm wiping it off with a paper towel. But if it runs up into my clouds, I just tilt it back the other way. My hake brush lost a lot of hair. I think it's shedding. But don't worry about loose hairs. Once it's dry, you'll be able to brush them off. You can see as it dries, it gets much, much lighter. And now you can brush off the hairs and you'll be ready for part two. This is the painting from part one and it's still evenly damp. I'm mixing a more saturated color of blue with a touch of red and yellow to repaint my sky. I start with the saturated wash and go just above the cloud tops because I know it's going to spread a little bit. And then I add water to thin down the blue. And then I add water again. This is called a graded wash. And this will help my sky be lighter as it goes towards the horizon and darker as it goes up. This makes a believable sky. While the paper's still wet, 
I'm going to use the blue with a few of the other colors to darken up some of the shadows in the clouds. I don't want the clouds to be too dark, but it dries so much lighter, it's hard to really get a good handle on the values. So I darken them up a little bit and then add some clear water to let them blend. Tilting the paper helps the color mix on the paper. Let gravity do the work for you. Now I'm going to dry the second wash. I'm using a brush that was dipped in water so it's damp to reactivate the paint at the cloud edges. And then I gently dab up the reactivated paint with the paper towel. Notice I'm not rubbing with the paper towel. This maintains the integrity of your paper. Depending on how many clouds you want, this could take a few minutes. You don't have to pick up all the paint when you reactivate it. And it's nice not to have a line of white, but to have the white dance in and out on top of the cloud, going into the cloud, so that you have believable looking clouds. The area on the left side is probably the darkest of the cloud shadows, so the little wispy clouds I lift up really stand out nicely. Since this area on the right hand side didn't dry quite as dark as I want, I'm putting just a little hint of value in the top of the cloud area to make it a little bit darker. This will make my whites appear even brighter. You can make a lot of adjustments in clouds if you take your time and you're patient. I'm going to finish the landscape, put in a few trees, and paint the little barn and the foreground. But this is primarily a lesson about clouds and skies. So this is just a hint of reality. Many people like their clouds so much, they decided to stick with just the clouds and put in a hot air balloon. I'm just suggesting the top of the trees and then I'm going to mush it in with my finger just so it looks like far away trees without very much color or detail. The trees are drying pretty dark so I add water to those and dab up some of that paint also. I wanted to give the impression of a field, so I put down a few stripes of color and a little more green right on top of it. For the final details, I'm going to be using Pro White. 
This is a white watercolor ink that works well with traditional watercolors. And I'm laying just a highlight on top of some of the cloud areas and then taking a clean damp brush and blending them in just a bit. A few really white highlights with soft edges can really make your watercolor sparkle. You can use white gouache, acrylic white, um, gesso makes a nice white. Watercolor gesso is available now. But it makes a wonderful finishing touch where you want your viewer to look. I wouldn't paint the top of all the clouds white. I would just pick a few spots here and there to add highlights. I gave the foreground a little more color. And here's the finished painting. I hope that helps you with clouds and skies. Work wet on wet and have a great landscape.